Hello my fellow riders and welcome to Riding Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about motorbike insurance um, and ways to get it. So today we're going to be talking about motorbike insurance. This video is designed for a 16 year old. The only reason that it is designed for a 16 year old is because of the prices that I'm going to give later on. All the other information in this video you can use on any motorbike. So it's only the prices that are, are specifically for a 16 year old. Now we're going to break this down into a couple of different sections. Uh, we're going to talk about what different types of insurance there are and subcategories cost of insurance and information that could invalidate your insurance and information that you need to give um, to the insurance company to make sure that they get you the right cover. So let's start off by saying um, what the different types of insurance are. So you have third party only and this is in essence to cover another party, not yourself. Third party fire and theft, again, is to cover a, another party and if somebody steals your bike or it sets on fire. And fully comprehensive, which is something that's supposed to cover a wider range of motoring mishaps, shall we say. And then you've got the subcategories, which is, are you going to be using it for social, domestic and pleasure, or are you going to be using it for social, domestic, pleasure and commuting? So... Uh, I know this video may be a little bit boring to, to some people, but it is information that you really need to know before you go out and get insurance for your motorbike. So stay tuned um, as long as you can, and we will get through the information as quickly as possible. So first uh, type of insurance is third party only. As I said before, this is designed to cover another party. So if you have an accident and it's your fault and you crash into somebody else, then this type of insurance will cover any damages caused to them. If you don't have any insurance at all and you crash into somebody, um, that is a criminal offence and you could face time in jail for it or a massive fine. So this is a minimum amount of insurance that you can have on a vehicle to legally ride it in the UK. And also in places like London, this may be the only type of insurance that you can get because of the theft rate and the crime rate in London in regards to motorbikes. So take that into consideration when, you, um, uh, when you're when you choosing your insurance. Sorry if I'm a bit shaky here, it's, uh, it's freezing in here. So uh, we're gonna get through this as quick as possible. So the next category would be third party fire and theft. This covers exactly the same as third party only and uh, with the addition of fire and theft. So if somebody steals your bike and it is locked up to what you said it was. So if you told them it was in a brick garage with chain around it and somebody steals your bike and it wasn't in a brick garage with chains around it, then potentially they can say that, well, you didn't lock your bike up, it's your fault. But um, if it was as said, then they will pay you most of what the bike's worth. If you have a £2,000 bike with a £400 excess on your claim, um, you will get £1,600 back for your bike. It's not fair, but this is how things are. The more experience you get on motorbikes and the, the, bit, the higher the license, the less, less, the, um, the lesser excess will be. So my excess, I've been riding for about four years now, and my excess is somewhere in a region of £100. So I think that's a minimum amount you can get, unless you're on fully comprehensive, and then it'll be zero, uh, potentially. So anyway, yes. Um, so that explains the third party fire and theft. Fully comprehensive is covers all the same stuff as third party fire and theft. Sometimes it covers your helmet, your jacket, your gloves, your boots, and all that sort of stuff. Any equipment that was in your vehicle at the time to an amount of about 500 pounds. And it will cover, the only additional thing that it covers is potentially uh, if you have a faulted accident, uh, sometimes they will cover your vehicle and give you the money back for that. And also if you get hit by an uninsured driver you should be able to still get your money back as well 
the third party only and the third party firing a theft if you get hit by an uninsured driver you will not get any of your money back um, unless you get a special claim a special insurance policy that covers that in particular so you've got to be careful of that now with the ampr cameras and all that sort of thing um, in villages and with all the ampr cameras in the villages and uh, the police everywhere uninsured drivers are getting less and less because it's harder to get away with it now than it all was before so i will have a piece of paper now for the next section and we're going to do cost of riding uh cost of insurance sorry now the cost of insurance is based on a 16 year old student who lives in mk11 and on three specific bikes so this is why i said that it is quite specific to a 16 year old when you uh, give information to the insurance companies you need to um, give them as much information as possible because it will affect whether your prices are higher or lower than they were before so when it comes to uh, prices for insurance there is a lot of things to take into consideration and this is why i said that this is this section is for a 16 year old now all the prices i got were given to me by bike sure if you do decide that you want to go for insurance there would be a link in the description and bike sure will give me a little bit of money um, for affiliating you to them so yeah it helps out riding reviews but yeah all this information was given to me by them for three different bikes for a 16 year old so the first motorbike is a yamazaki ym50 re uh, fully comprehensive with 531 pounds and 10p third party fire and theft is 319 pounds and 67 pence and third party only is 270 pounds and 49 pence now for a yamazaki f50 the price for a fully comprehensive is 420 pounds and 10 pence third party fire and theft is 235 and 65 pence 67 pence sorry and third party only is 235 and 49 pence now the last bike in the list is the Lexmoto Echo Plus fully comprehensive is 428 pounds and 85 pence third party fire and theft is 319 pounds and 67 pence and third party only is 235 pounds and 49 pence so as you can see um, fully comprehensive is the most expensive third party only is the cheapest there is uh, differences to the rules like in london you will only be able to get third party only um, in quite a lot of circumstances uh, so you've got to take that in consideration there's a lot of a lot of stuff that um, goes into giving you a price on your insurance for the 17 year old 17 year old should be looking somewhere in the similar sort of price range just because of uh, the uh, analytical stuff that they use to come up with these prices the risk factors between 16 and 17 year old aren't that different so the, the prices should be fairly similar right we're going to the last uh, last part of this video which is information that you should provide to your insurance company um, to make sure that you get the best insurance prices and information that you don't give to them that could invalidate and void your insurance so uh, first thing we're going to go with things that could help uh, reduce your insurance costs when you are applying for them so things like if your bike is in a brick garage with a chain around it that will reduce your insurance premium um, what you're using it for how many miles you're going to go on it if there's anybody else in your in your house with insurance sometimes that helps as well and crime rates around your area if somebody's stole that in particular bike um, in your area within the last couple of weeks or so uh, then yes that's going to increase your insurance premium by quite a lot so the further you get away from like the bigger cities usually the cheaper your insurances are because the, the crime rates in the cities are higher than they are in the urban areas this isn't always true um, there is a lot of different factors that go into insurance just make sure that you're 100 percent accurate insurance companies will try uh, quite a lot of stuff to get out of paying you um, and quite a lot of this the easiest way to get out of paying somebody for an insurance thing is by them not having told them um, 
the correct information. Now let's talk about something, uh, things that could void your insurance. So for valid insurance, you would need a valid MOT on a bike, unless you're not using it. If you're just storing it somewhere and you've got insurance, um, then that's fine, but that's a different type of insurance than road insurance. So uh, you would need a valid MOT certificate, you would need valid tax. If you are 16 years old, you need to make sure that your bike is not unrestricted. It has to go 30, uh, between 28 and 30 miles an hour, um, unless uh, it was brought into the country without that restrictor, because there are a different, couple of different types of restriction on bike. But if the bike was brought into the country doing 30 miles an hour, then it has to stay doing 30 miles an hour until you're 17. So if you get caught with um, with a de-restrictor removed from your bike, it would be the same as having no insurance and you will get done for having no insurance and uh, not a valid license because you, at 17 you're allowed to ride a non-restricted 50cc, at 16 you are not. So if you're riding a de-restricted 50cc at 16 years old, you are also classed as not having the correct license. So you will get done for not having the correct license, not having any insurance, even though you've got some because it's invalid. So all these things you've got to be careful of um, when insuring your bike, just be as accurate as possible. Um, they also want to know if you modified your bike. They don't mean particularly changing the end can and stuff like that. And what they really mean is like performance upgrades. Um, but still, if you want to tell them that you've changed a can, you can do, but most people don't. So all this information you have to take it at your own risk. You will have to do your own research when doing it. As I said before, Byteshaw supplied with me with all this information. And if you want to go through Byteshaw, which 90% of the time is the cheapest for small capacity motorbikes, um, there is a link in the description and as I said writing reviews will get a little bit of a kickback if you do so. So I hope this has helped you uh, with your insurance needs and uh, given you a little bit of information so that you can better understand and better get insurance. So a little bit of a channel update. Yes I have been off for a couple of weeks. I have been uploading videos but I haven't been as active as I normally would be. Uh, this is because I have now got a son. I've got a daughter, she's five, but I've also got a son now and he was born on the 12th of January. So, And he is all happy and healthy and I will be returning to work Tuesday of next week. So we hopefully will be able to get some more uh, motorbike test ride videos and uh, videos of lots of different stuff. Now apparently Lex Motor have I think it's 12, 12 new models coming. I don't know exactly when they're landing but I know they have 12 models coming. Um, Motor GB have a lot. Motor GB have a lot of um, new models coming and so do Zontis and Keyway and all of those sort of people. So we're going to have a lot of new bikes this year to do test rides on. That's all good. So if this video has helped you, thumbs up, thumbs down, comment below if you've got anything to say. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated to all my latest content. And up here somewhere there will be a video on more informational videos. And down here will be whatever YouTube decides is best for you. But hit that subscribe button there to stay updated to all my latest content. As always, ride safe.